All right, let's finish the cash budget up. Um, so we have kind of what our inflows and outflows for cash payments is going to be for the months of the year now. Uh, that's what we built in the first three videos. So now uh, my, my beginning cash balance for January is just going to be my ending cash balance for December of 2016 since I'm doing 2017. So if you go back to your financials, uh, here's the 2016 balance sheet. And at the end of 2016, they had $1.277 billion. Um, and so we just plug that in here, 1277. That was the ending cash balance in December. And so January is just going to, uh, beginning balance is just going to equal December end balance. And then February will be the same. So when we drag this over, it'll pick them up uh, and just offset one month, right? Um, and then collections minus disbursements, easy enough. So here's our total collections. Here's our total, total disbursements. So I'm just going to take one minus the other, like it says. Uh, if you put collections down here, you can use this one as well. It doesn't really matter. And that gives us our unadjusted cash balance. Uh, so if we take our beginning cash plus the amount of uh, collections minus disbursements, right? In this case, it's going to add $393 million. Uh, if we had lost money, you'd be adding a negative and it would go down. So this will take care of what our cash balance unadjusted is. Uh, and we're going to use that to calculate our current borrowing. Uh, to do that, we need a minimum and maximum acceptable cash level. Uh, and so I'm just going to go look at their balance sheet, and UNP tends to have you know, 1.2, 1.2 billion, 1.4 almost, 1.5 or 6, 1.4. Uh, I also pulled up quarterlies just to make sure, uh, just to make sure that they were in line too. So cash on hand, 1.8 billion, 1.6 billion. So they tend to be somewhere between one and two billion dollars, it looks like. And so I'm just going to kind of look historically and guess what I would think they want to keep their their cash on hand at. And they seem to want to have between a billion and two billion dollars. So those are going to be my um, my uh, amounts that I'm going to try and stay between. Now, borrowing and lending rates, um, you can get a few different ways. Uh, I usually like to do it stuff like this. I'm going to Google U.S. Treasury. Uh, yields, right? Uh, and I can go look at the yield curve on treasury rates and say, hey, if I'm if I'm investing money short term, so if I have too much cash on hand and I end up putting it in short term investments, how much am I going to get? Well, short term uh, investments right now are looking like about two and a half percent. So that's about what I'm going to get if I if I do that. That's going to be my lending rate. So if I have too much money on hand, I'm going to get about two and a half percent if I invest it. I can also go look at bond yields for UNP for short term, uh, and you can see like here's some short yield maturity um, bonds that they have. Uh, not these ones that are 20 years out. You want to look at the ones that are only like uh, due in like 2020, 2021, and you'll see they're getting like three and a half percent. This one's even a little lower, um, three and a half, three two, um, something like that. So. Uh, if we have to borrow short term, we're probably going to have to pay, I'm going to guess, you know, three and a half percent, something like that. Uh, and those are just, again, rough estimates. They don't need to be perfect. Uh, but I am going to then convert both of those over. I'm going to divide it by 12 so that they are monthly rates instead of annual rates. Um, and that way when we calculate uh, short term interest expense or income, uh, we're using monthly rates because I'm going to invest, if I have extra and I invest it in January, it's only going to be in there for a month. And so that'll give me my interest in February uh, at a monthly rate rather than an annual. Uh, and then it's time to do the logic statements. So here's the fiddliest bit. It's kind of hard uh, if you're not familiar with logic statements, but um, we're just going to use a simple if statement to calculate what we need to borrow or lend to maintain our cash between $1.1 billion and $2 billion. So uh, the first piece, and there's going to be three pieces of logic here, so this is actually going to be a nested if statement. We're going to have two ifs. Um, but if if our, um, I'm going to hit the up arrow, if E30, our unadjusted cash balance, is below a um, billion dollars, right, then um, it, I'm going to hit comma, then if true, oh, I should probably lock that. I'm going to go back, hit F4 on B36 because that billion is going to stay the same. Comma. If true, then what I need to do is figure out how far away from a billion I am because that's how much money I'm going to need to borrow. So value of true should be calculated by taking uh, the minimum acceptable caching, and I'm going to lock that and subtracting uh, the E30, which will be less than a billion in that case, right? We just defined it as such. And so that'll give us a positive borrowing value. Um, so that'll tell us how much we need to borrow to get back to our minimum. 
Uh, and then I'm going to hit common. It says value of false. Like I said, we need another logic piece. So your value of false should just be another if statement. Uh, so if this is not true, it's just going to go into the second um, if statement and do the next logical test. So now we want to know if our um, unadjusted cash balance is greater than two billion. Well, then we have too much cash on hand. I'm going to lock that. Um, and so we should invest some of it. Now I want this to be, it's going to be current borrowing here. So I want it to be negative borrowing because uh, our current borrowing is going to be negative. We're going to actually have too much cash um, and that'll be investing. Um, and so uh, my value if true should be negative, uh, which means I need to take the 2 billion uh, locked minus uh, my unadjusted cash balance, which by definition, if this is true, right, is going to be larger than 2 billion. Right, that's how we set it up. And then I'm going to hit comma value of false. I'm going to put zero. Um, so if if the cash is between a billion and two billion, then I don't need to borrow or lend any money. I just keep what I have on hand. And then I'm going to put two parentheses because I'm going to close both if statements. And I'm going to hit enter. And for now, it's zero because I am between one billion and two billion. You can test this. So if I put uh, 500 in there, that should become 500 because that'll get us back to a billion. Uh, if I put 2,500 in there, it should do the opposite. It should give us a negative 500 to take of the excess money and invest it somewhere. Okay, so you can test to make sure your logic statements are working right. Uh, and then that that will be our ending cash balance will just be that plus that. So uh, unadjusted cash balance plus ending current borrowing, um, 1670. And we'll test that again once we get all the pieces built. Uh, cumulative borrowing. Um, so what's going to happen with cumulative borrowing uh, is this we're going to calculate our interest expense off of. Um, and all it is is previous month um, cumulative borrowing plus current month cumulative borrowing. Um, and I'll kind of come back to this in a second if we need to to talk about it. But all you're doing is uh, if we borrowed here, it's going to put that value in here. And then the next time if we have to borrow again, I want it to add the new borrowing to that and our borrowing grows. Uh, similarly, if it goes negative, I want it to subtract. And so we'll test to make sure that works. For now, it's still zero because we haven't done anything. Uh, cumulative interest expense is going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be previous income expense, interest expense plus, um, or income, interest expense or income plus current interest expense or income. Um, uh, and we still have to build the logic statement here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag all of these over to to make sure this part's working, then I'll build this logic piece and then we'll make sure the whole thing works. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight everything we just did. I'm gonna grab the little drag handle and drag it over. Uh, and here's what happens. So our cash stays between a billion and two billion pretty much uh, the whole way. Then toward the end of the year, we cross that threshold. So our unadjusted cash balance went above. So now we have 1. 172 million we invested, so we have extra cash. The next month, nothing happened, so it still stays there. Uh, we didn't need to borrow or, or lend. And then again, the in December, we had extra cash, so we invested some more, so then that investment goes up. Now, again, if, for instance, and now I can play with stuff, right? So if we only had $500 billion, or 500, yeah, $500 million the first time, then it would have borrowed something. And actually, this throws us everything off, so then I'd have had to borrow in the first two months, and now I have this, and there's no lending. Um, you can test to make sure the thing is working, though, by then going here and, and putting it like here's 2.8. Right, so now I have too much. Now that 800 should first pay off the cumulative borrowing of 633, and then anything left over becomes investing. That investing should carry through until we get to invest again, and then it'll grow. Um, so you can kind of test to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, but anyway, I like to make sure everything works. It looks like it works fine. Uh, your logic statement is, is behaving appropriately. So then I'm going to build my interest up here. Um, and so interest is going to be nothing in January ever. So you can start in February um, unless you're working off a of balance. So if you're carrying over a, a, a short-term borrowing or lending uh, value from the year before, you could build January, but I don't need to worry about it here. What happens is this cumulative borrowing uh, oh, I need another if statement. If this cumulative borrowing is uh, greater than zero, that means that I need to borrow. I have borrowed money, and I have to pay interest on it. And in that case, I'm going to take um, that amount, the amount I've borrowed, times 
the borrowing rate down here, the monthly borrowing rate, and that will tell me how much interest I pay on that for the month. If uh, a comma, value if false, uh, again, another if statement. If um, the cumulative borrowing is less than zero, that means we had negative borrowing or um, uh, negative borrowing or what we call lending, right? So uh, when we have excess cash, we can invest it and make a little interest on it. Um, in that case, right, all we do is take that amount times uh, the rate we get for short-term investing, okay? Uh, and that's it. Then if, any, if it's not either of those, then it's just zero, okay? And we can just carry that over all the way here, okay? Now what happens is you'll see we actually start to get this is the only place we actually get any money, uh, and it's a very, very small amount. Um, uh, not for you or me, that's $360,000, um, <laughs> but for uh, UNP, it's not uh, a ton of money. But they do start getting some short-term interest expense, uh, and in fact, this in this case, income uh, toward the end of the year, uh, if you show the decimals out. Now, again, we can test everything. So if I put 500 in here, I have to borrow 500 in the first month. What you'll see is then I have uh, you know 500 million in debt, so I start accumulating short-term interest expense. Let's add a couple decimals so you can kind of see. Uh, then I had to borrow again in the second month, and so the interest expense goes up a little bit. Then it stays flat the rest of the way because nothing happens. If we pay that off, so if there, we have a month where we have excess cash, um, oh, something like that, uh, what will happen is two things. Um, one is now we're negative, so now we're going to start getting interest income instead of interest expense. Um, and that's good. That's what we want to see when it's negative. And then you'll see the cumulative interest expense. So first we didn't have any, but as we start having interest expense, it starts accumulating down here, cumulative interest expense. But then as we start getting some investing, that cumulative interest expense will start going back down again because we're basically we're earning income now instead of um, and it'll kind of pay off this initial interest. And by the end of the year, we're back to where we basically broke even. Uh, but anyway, you can kind of test to make sure everything's working right. But that's what the bottom of your sheet should look like. It's different uh, than what your book does. So this is this will look different than what your book does. The way they do it is much more complicated than the way I just did it. Um, uh, I am going to go back to there. That's what the original looked like. Um, and I'm going to add a couple of decimals here. But other than that, that's that's what your cash budget should look like. That's how you should end it out. And uh, we will move on to pro formas and fun things like that after cash budgets.